I am Chef Aaron Sanchez, and I'm here with my beautiful sister, Marisa Sanchez. And we have both grown up in El Paso, Texas, but we come from a long line of great Mexican chefs. So, like most families in Latin America, food is such a central part of how we come together. And we are extremely proud, we are honored to share our legacy with you guys. So, we have chosen four delicious recipes from four distinct, yummy Latin American countries. And you know, for me, one of the things that's essential and extremely important to my cooking, I never, without a doubt, compromise on freshness of ingredients and their unbelievable quality. Now, Serrano Chile, grab a couple of those. Yep. Myself. And then we need a little habanero. These have a beautiful taste. I mean, for me, they're very tropical. Floral. And floral, they taste yeah. like the sun. So I think we're good with the produce. Yes. Let's rock That's and roll nice. over to the seafood. Wow, look no. at this beautiful seafood. Are you kidding me? This is the real deal right here. Thank you, you have a great day. Here are the ingredients that are gonna give us that authentic sabor, that flavor, right? We need some frijoles, right? Some refried beans. Black beans? Yeah, mm -hmm. black beans is the way to go. So good stuff, I think we're rocking and rolling with that, no? Do we have everything we need? Should we get cooking? I think it's time, All right, come on. Let's go. One of the most iconic dishes for me is a ceviche mixto, okay? My favorite. Absolute classic from Love Latin it. America. Very Peruvian. Very Peruvian. Yeah. These ceviches, they're acidic, they're bright. They open up your palate. Yep. It's just a great way to start a meal. Each one of those different shellfish and fish really do have their own little mission in this whole beautiful ceviche. Take a little bite of that. <laughs> so just be cool. All right, so here we go. Don't want to overload you with the onion. That's delicious. So fresh, tasty, very well balanced. Let's talk about Mexican Huachinango Veracruzana Tostada. Our country, Veracruz, Mexico, beautiful region. It's known for the Veracruzana sauce, which is classic, mm -hmm. that most Mexican restaurants, most Mexican chefs know, and everyone has their own little twist on it. So traditionally, it's made with snapper, we were really fortunate to get some beautiful red rockfish. You know, you could serve it over rice, potentially, but you and I are big fans of texture, right? Right, crunch, adding all of the elements to make something, that's what makes your palate. Engage, yeah. yeah, and it makes you want to have another bite. Yeah. Right, so what we've gone ahead and done is got a beautiful tostada. Okay. And we have some shaved lettuce for some freshness there, and then put some of that beautiful mixture of the rockfish, Put a little bit of that wonderful capers and olives in there. And this is a beautiful representation of the Spanish influence in Mexico, right? Right. Cortez came to, to conquer the New World in 1519. He landed in the port of Veracruz, brought these series of ingredients from Europe, and it definitely did influence the way Mexican food is cooked today. Yeah. This is an art in eating. Okay? I, I'm gonna watch you first. So you gotta do the little <laughs> thing. The, you kinda, the lean over? The lean over, you hike over like that. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. Very good. Now we're gonna go to the Caribbean, to Puerto Rico. They're such lively people. Just every single bit of everything they do, their food, their music, everything. They're Everything's a party of fiesta, always, right? Always, always. So, so good food. Absolutely. And this is what I love about this, because this is a super accessible dish that is that beautiful slow cooker, pollo guisado. It has a lot of influences from Puerto Rico, from the carrots to the beautiful olives. We've taken some chicken quarters, and we've actually slow cooked that for a little bit with some beautiful sazon, some tomato, bunch of different spices. It's gonna be great for Sunday dinner. Absolutely, right? right? Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and serve you a beautiful bowl. And it's all about that broth, girl. Mm -hmm. Are you garnishing it with what? With a little bit of queso cotija. Okay. Okay. Put a little bit of parsley if you want, or a little cilantro, and get down with that, okay? It smells delicious. Isn't it? Yeah. All of these really traditional things just kind of are something that remind you of childhood and a lot of family memories. What we have here is some beautiful Salvadoranian pupusas mm -hmm. with cortido, right? So this beautiful sort of pockets of love that have pork, cheese, and beans in there. They're wrapped and enrobed with masa. They're griddled. They're served with this beautiful, acidic, very sort of crunchy little slaw. And then we're gonna finish this very simply with some beautiful salsa. This could be like a little kind of roasted tomato salsa. Something Whatever with, you want, whatever yeah, you have in the fridge. A little bit of heat. You're gonna be generous and liberal with it. What's nice about the pupusas, and especially in 
El Salvador is everybody makes them differently. Yeah, so. you go into any of the major metropolises in, Sa in El Salvador and you see these stands peppered throughout the barrios and the communities there, okay? All right, so let's have a little taste here, beautiful. mamacita. Mm -hmm. a little nice to meet fresh you. cabbage, delicious. Oh yeah. Try eating that gracefully. Woo wee! <laughs> Man, that's tasty. Delicious. It was so fun to cook with you again, just like the old days. Come on. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope you recreate these wonderful recipes in your home, continue to make memories, bonds with your family through food. Muchísimas gracias. Salud. Salud a ti.